Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today on day five of my seven days of Halloween, I'm also guest designing for Indigo Blue. So this video will also be simultaneously uploaded to the Indigo Blue YouTube channel. So for today's project I'm going to be working on an 8x8 flat canvas. I'm also going to be using the Damage Damask mixed media cardstock and I'm using the Burning Bonfire Orange Damask paper which I've already cut to the same size as my canvas. I'm going to glue the entire piece down using the matte medium from Mod Podge. So once it's all stuck down, I'm just going to give the entire of the top a coating just to seal all the print in. Now any of those bubbles that you can see in there, once it's dry completely, they will flatten out just like wallpaper. And as you can see, I'm just taking a piece of um, sanding block, a foam sanding block, and I'm just going to sand the edges to expose the paper underneath. And I'm just going to wipe off any of the excess paper dust with a wet wipe. So to create the first set of embellishments for my canvas, I'm using the Apothecary Bottles Bigs Dye from Tim Holt and Sizzix. And as you can see, I've already uh, run it through my big shot and cut it out of a piece of gray grunge board. Now, now I'm going to paint each one of the bottles. So I'm using the Hot Cocoa Acrylic Paint, the Peppermint Tea Acrylic Paint, and also the Townhouse Teal Acrylic Paint. Don't worry if you didn't catch those names first off, because I will list them again each time I use them for the bottles. So to start off with then, on the smaller bottle, I'm going to be using the Townhouse Teal. And on the next size bottle, I'm going to be using the Peppermint Tea Acrylic Paint. And for the largest size bottle, I'm using the Hot Cocoa Acrylic Paint. And because the paints are opaque, I don't need to do two coats, so all I have to do is just to dry them off before I move on to the next stage. To give my bottles a little bit of ageing, I'm going to use the Sepia Archival Ink from Ranger and an ink blending foam. And I'm just going to go around all of the edges and then just catch some of the highlights on the actual body of the bottles themselves, just to give them a little bit more of a 3D effect. So the bottles are now looking suitably aged and suitably dirty as they've been sitting on a shelf for a long time. So now that I've had a chance to look at the canvas, I didn't particularly like the white edges, so I decided to go all the way around the canvas with the same sepia archival ink. And then to stick down my bottles, I'm going to use some 3D silicon glue gel, which is normally used for 3D decoupage. And I'm going to add some blobs to the backs of my bottles so that when it dries, they will remain 3D 
and not flattened because this gel will set exactly as it is three dimensionally. Because this gel is extremely strong, it will hold all the pieces in place straight away. So for my next focal point on my canvas, I'm going to be using the Twit Two Owl Stamp from Indigo Blue. This is an A6 stroke, an A2 sized stamp, so it's a very, very good size. I'm going to ink it up using the very same sepia archival ink, and I'm going to stamp that onto a piece of off-white cardstock. As you can see, perfect impression. So all I need to do now is just using my craft knife, I'm going to cut the entire the owl out, but obviously I'm not going to make you sit through the whole process, so I will just jump to the end where I finish cutting it out. And now I'm going to grab my vintage photo distress marker and using the brush tip end, I'm just going to go around the edge of my cutout just to remove those raw white edges. And then just to give the owl a little bit more detail, I decided to bring out my Wild Honey Distress Marker and again using the brush tip just colouring the owl's beak. And then once again using the sepia ink and the blending foam, I'm just going to go around the edges of the owl just to uh, add that same kind of blended look as the other elements I've already done. Because I also want my owl to look a little bit dimensional, I'm adding some foam pads to the back of the owl as well. But rather than just have the one set, I'm going to put a double layer of foam pads just to make sure that it just stand off the actual canvas a little bit further. And as sometimes happens when you're filming projects like this, you forget sometimes to switch the camera on when you're filming. So you won't have seen me stick the two pieces of wooden effect paper across the, um, the bottom and across the centre of the canvas. Uh, I do apologise for that, but I just forgot to press record. But trust me, all I did was stick them down with glue. You didn't miss much. And so for my next embellishment for the canvas, I'm going to be using the test tube elements from the Chemistry Lab stamp set, again from Indigo Blue, and again using the same ink to make sure that we have that continuity throughout the entire of the project. Um, I'm going to just use the sepia ink and stamp down using the same card that I also used for the owl. And again, I'm going to cut it out with my craft knife. So now that it's cut out, I do want to add a little bit of colour to those test tubes. So I'm going to take the Twisted Citroen Distress Marker and put some on my craft mat. Uh, a little mini mister, I'm going to spritz a little bit of water on and then with a small detail brush, I'm just going to paint in uh, a little watery effect colour using that ink from the marker pen. I didn't want a really strong colour, which is why I didn't just colour in from the marker directly. And then once I'm done with those, I'm going to repeat the process with some different colours just to add a little bit of variety of colour into those test tubes. But of course, I am going to use Halloween type colours. And just to finish it off, I'm going to use the brushed corduroy distress marker just to colour in those tips on the tops of the test tubes. 
And once again, I want a little bit of dimension behind this. So I'm just going to use some foam pads again. And then using the vintage photo distress marker once more, I'm going to go around the outside of the cutout just to blend in those white edges before I stick it down onto my canvas. So now they're stuck down on the top shelf, I'm going to bring out a Signal White Opaque Gel Rollerball Pen and I'm going to add in some white highlights just to give a little bit of pop to my test tubes and I'm also going to add a little bit of highlights to the bottles. If you haven't got one of these Signo white opaque pens then you can also use a Posca white pen or even just white paint or even white gesso and a fine brush just to add in those little lines of detail. So once again using the Chemistry Lab stamp set I'm going to use this quote from the set which says creativity is intelligence having fun and again I'm going to use exactly the same inks as before, so I'm going to use the sepia ink to stamp out my saying, my quote, onto the same card, which I'm then going to cut out, just using a pair of scissors. I'm then going to take some black card from my stash, and I'm just going to mount this panel onto the black card. Because I've used the multi-purpose glue, it doesn't set instantly, it does give you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can manoeuvre your word block so that you have an equal border all the way around. You just have a little bit of a playtime um, so you can manoeuvre it before it grabs. And as with the other elements, I'm just going to pop a couple of those foam pads onto the back and then I can stick it onto my canvas. And I'm now going to bring out the Hocus Pocus stamp set. I'm going to use the spider's web stamp from that set. I'm just going to mask off the spider because I don't want that on there. I just want the web. And I'm going to use some jet black archival ink and then load up the stamp and then I'm going to stamp that in the top right hand corner of the canvas just to give it a little bit more of a um, Halloween-y kind of theme. And while I've still got the Jet Black Archival ink out, I'm just going to use an ink blending foam and just go around the edge just to darken and dirty just a little bit more, um, just to make it a bit more grungy. And then as a finishing touch, I'm just going to grab a little bit of white gesso. This is the white gesso good from Indigo Blue. Add a little bit of water with my Mini Mister. I'm just going to mix that up on the craft mat with my fan brush. And then I'm just going to add some white speckles or some white splatters just to make it look a little bit like dust motes in the air. And once I'm happy with those white splatters, I'm just going to grab my heat gun and just give it a little bit of a blast, a gentle warm, just to dry the splatters before I do the finishing touch, which is just to grab the ink blending tool and just to go around some of the areas just to add that final touch of dirt 
and grunge to the corners of my word block and just to catch some of the other little uh, elements as well just to make sure that it does look a bit dirty and dusty and then I think we can call this project complete So I hope you've enjoyed watching this little Halloween canvas come together. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.